Ladies and gentlemen, nearly 200 years ago, 18 men, women and children died on this very spot, fighting for liberty, democracy and freedom. They came from as far away as Halifax, Rochdale, Oldham. 60,000 people met in this spot. As a result, powers that be decided to introduce the militia, cavalry and cannon. 18 men, women and children died on this spot so that you can have a semblance of freedom today. It's not taught in schools. It's been airbrushed out of history, your history. Your ancestors died at Peterloo. Every year we are changed Manchester commemorates the fact that 18 men, women and children died on this very spot. The establishment by a Manchester City Council has re reluctantly placed a plan. On the other side, the Central Library, but it took nearly 200 years for them to recognise that they were culpable in the murder of 18 men, women and children. 700 people were injured on that day. Members of the press were arrested and imprisoned. The soldiers in charge of the cavalry, the traitors in charge of the militia received medals of honour for the murder of 18 men, women and children on this very spot. People have demanded a memorial a true and fitting memorial for these murders, nothing has materialised. It has been airbrushed from history. Take the leaf book from our people, learn about your past. Your ancestors died at Peter Lewis. Nearly 200 years ago, 1819, 60,000 people congregated in the area that is now known as St. Peter's Square, fighting for liberty, freedom and democracy. The only people that had the vote were landowners, aristocracy, barons, royalty, nobody else. Ordinary working people had to fight for the crumb from the table. They came from as far away as Halifax, Rochdale, Oldham, Stockport, surrounding areas, congregating this place. There was no Facebook, there was no internet, there was no mobile phones. 60,000 people came to this spot to fight for their freedom, for their right to vote freedoms that you've forgotten, freedoms that you're giving away. The powers that be are treating you as cattle, as slaves. Wake up people, it's time to realise that our ancestors who die a piece of were turning their graves if they could see the slaves that you've become. When you aspire to nothing more than an Apple iPod, dance your ancestors died at Peterloo. 18 men, women and children, including a two-year-old baby, died for your freedom. So that you can wear your iPods, so that you can buy in shops, so that you can watch dancing on ice on television. Wake up people, you're sleepwalking into slavery. Take a leap from our people. Nearly 200 years ago, men, women and children, 18, died on this very spot. There's no memorial, they're not remembered, they died for freedom. 60,000 people gathered in this very area we stand now. Set upon by militia, by cannon, by cavalry, 18 of our brothers and sisters died for your freedom. So that you can wear an iPod, so that you can watch television while we bomb for sovereign nation. Time to wake up. You're sleepwalking into a new world order. We bail out banks. We borrow from a private bank, the Bank of England, to bail out private banks, putting your children and your grandchildren in debt. The people who died on this very spot, Peterloo, will turn in their graves if they can see the slaves we have become. We are here to raise awareness uh, with regards to the Peter the Massacre and the people that died on our behalf. Um, handing out flyers, spreading the word, talking to members of the public who don't have the headphones on and just trying to get a general awareness of this event. It's not easy, is it? It's not been easy. As uh, you stated before, that the if, if people think you're basically handing them uh, sales leaflets. Um, 
which is uh, was always going to be an issue. But at the same time, even if you do hand out some of these leaflets, people don't even have the time just to look at the major headline, and it's all there. It's a shame that we have to hand out, hand out leaflets when uh, history, especially in Manchester, that has been forgotten because we're not taught. I mean, I only found out about this myself a few years ago. It wasn't taught in the school, two miles down the road. Um, so it's people like We Are Change, groups like We Are Change, Feeling North Race, etc., that are actually, you know, forefront of this and spreading awareness. It's hard to believe, isn't it? You know, in this very spot, 60,000 people, nearly 200 years ago, were able to mobilise. 60,000 people, well that just shows you the depth of community spirit then and, and if you just uh, apply that to now, as you said, that's, you can't even uh, you know, arrange a night out with more than five or six people without using a mobile phone, as you said, or you know, modern technology. So these people, the, the, the depth of feeling, community spirit was such that they decided off, the, off their own back to get together uh, with the Manchester Patriotic Union leading the way, the way and just, as I said, walk from all over the northwest for miles to meet, to protest, peaceful protest, as we are doing again today. It's hard to imagine, is it? You know, the, the carnage that must have been here after the, the militia was sent in and the cavalry and they used cannon. And well, we've 18 got 18 people died, um, 700 were injured. 700. Can you imagine the carnage on that day? Well, we, I mean, we've got the backdrop of, of trams going by in traffic now, and that's making a din. So, to, to, that, that must have been, you know. To, to see that, to hear that, to witness that in, on this very spot virtually. Um, I, you, you, there's no words for it, you, you can't really imagine it. But that's what I mean. I mean, something that, that strong, something that, that significant that's happened, that, you know, that, that when it's sent waves across the entire planet, really, because it changed a lot of laws, and still people now, it's the powers that be, making their presence known right next to us, who pushed all this under the carpet, so there's no more of it. It says it all, doesn't it? Because you're, you're right, right Paul, when, this, when you say that it brought about massive change for people people who massacred and yet Manchester City Council, uh, a socialist council for God knows how long, uh, ignore it and yet you'd think they'd use it as a rallying cry wouldn't you for uh, freeing people from this uh, tyranny, this enslavement. Well they'll, they'll, te they'll teach you about um, uh, you know the depression of the, the, the World War II and etc like that in the school and anything else like that, anything that's in retaliation to the powers that be the government so called, they, they, they will not they will not instill that in any youth. And you can see that it's very evident today that people, unless, it, unless it's flashing out on, the, on the, their iPhone or whatever it is they've got in hand, then they're not interested. I think what it was about Pete Lula, wasn't it, was that um, it was just normal people fighting for their rights. They didn't have the right to vote. They were, the, the Corn Laws had brought in um, uh, a loaf of bread was equivalent to £10 a day. Imagine it 200 years ago. So people were starving. Children were working in mills and mines. It must have been horrendous. But it was ordinary people who didn't really have a political agenda. It just shows you now that people are so compartmentalised and trapped in these left-right paradigms that that's why the establishment is frightened of Peterloo because it was just an ordinary people's rebellion. Exactly. I mean, can you imagine saying to your next door neighbour, "There's a bit of an event here. If you just, you know, if you want to join us, we'll all sort of meet up." You, you get laughed at. You, you know, he probably won't speak to you again for another six months. And that's that's now that's how the divide and conquer has worked. It's evident. No, but nobody's interested, nobody wants to know. And even if they do see a headline and think, oh, that's bad, we'll still walk past. There's nothing here to commemorate it. It's just, it's just forgotten, forgotten completely. That's it. The one, the one pledge we can make, isn't it, that we won't forget it. We won't forget it. We won't forget it. And, uh, and I think, that, you know, the, uh, the, the, the idea of what we're doing today, handing out leaflets, spreading the word, is, you know, there's always a few that will take note. And we've seen that. There are a few people who do remember this. And uh, we, you know they've read about it recently, or remember it even from last year walking by. So it is getting out there. But we just need to keep pushing, and everybody, to everybody, not just groups like ourselves, but every single person to remember this event and events like this. Hey, Lee, so you're not actually from Manchester, are you? You're from um, Wirral. I've actually come from the Wirral today, yeah, right, to be so here, especially. Were you aware of the people in Manchester? Uh, I wasn't until We Are Change, I have to say. Um, it was when I first got involved with We Are Change a couple of months ago. I started watching the videos and that was when I first became aware. To my shame, I have to say. Uh, so many of us don't know about this. Well, it's it? not really your fault, is it? Because like, the point we were making, it's been airbrushed from history, hasn't it? It isn't taught in schools. Wouldn't you think it would be, wouldn't you? Absolutely, yes. Six well, you would, people. but then when you know how things really work, you realise yeah. that's why. And how can we sort of relate it to the sort of struggle we've got today? Well, um, not a lot has changed. <laughs> people are just less aware of it because people aren't in quite so dire a situation in this country yet with regards to poverty, although there are a lot of people struggling, but it's not quite to the same degree. Uh, but the system hasn't changed really, it's just been cleverly hidden from people. Just different faces? Yeah. Different yeah. uniforms, different faces, but the same people pulling the strings. Absolutely, yeah. And in effect, this was, um, 
you think about it, it was Manchester's Tiananmen Square. It was. It exactly, was. and yet yeah, everyone knows about Tiananmen Square. That's taught in schools, but yet we've got it on our very doorstep. Yeah. Where men, women, and I emphasize children. Yes. One as young as two years old. And it was one as young as two, yeah. 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 And Top it says one. estimated 18. What does that mean? <laughs> well, that means it was probably count, a hell of a lot. Count, did they? That, that's what they were just cattle to be slaughtered. Yeah. So the fact that they can't even come up with a true figure of how many died says it all, doesn't it? And the fact that it says over 700 men and women injured. seriously injured. Seriously so injured. That is not good. You know, and how many died later from those injuries? We don't know because it's all been that pushed up, yeah. taken out of history. The small snippets we are given don't give us the big picture of what actually happened. We're piecing it together now. But um, how do you think the response from the general public's been? Um, pretty much as expected, I would say. I think most people are just too busy getting on with their own lives. They're too worried about their own lives. Um, most people that will take a leap will, will label pass it, and it's quite sad, really. And as someone who's woke up and is now an active um, for, activist for freedom, does that, that apathy in the general public does that uh, depress you a bit, or do you it see does. inspiration it, from other side? It does depress me, um, but. I'm meeting more and more people that feel the same way, so it's just, there's, there's always got to be hope because if we don't have hope, we have nothing. You're right, thanks very much. Right, so, uh, why have you, you come down today? Well, we're here today to remember the people who were massacred uh, many years ago, right here in um, Peterloo Square. Um, it's very important to remember people who came before us who fought for our freedoms. They're not here now, and you know, at this moment in history, our, our freedoms are under attack. It's important that we stand up and fight just as the people did before us. They died and, you know, their blood was, was shed here. We want to make sure it wasn't for nothing. When did you sort of first become aware of it? Were you taught in school? I was never taught this in school. I had no idea about it. Um, being a local Mancunian myself, I think there's a lot of uh, Manchester's history which I had never known about. Why do you think it's sort of been airbrushed though? Why, why would you think they'd sort of avoid the issue? It's probably the shame, isn't it? I mean, Manchester now has like this up-and-coming reputation. It has quite a liberal reputation as well. And I think that what happened in Peterloo Square um, all those years ago, I think it's just um, it's a shame, isn't it? It's the shame of it. Who wants to admit that um, you know these things happened here in Manchester? But it's, it's important. Sad, it? It's sad, but it's important that people are aware of it, so that you know it doesn't happen again, and so that um, also the council can actually acknowledge and the people who were here before and what they fought for to make sure it never happens again. And they're resistant to do that, aren't they? Sorry? They're reticent to do it, they don't want to do it. They give us a little plaque on the other side, but yeah. there's no memorial, is there, apart from the death memorials they've got there? No. I mean, you know, Manchester has a really rich and vibrant history of, um, of protest, of revolution, and of people kind of, you know, having that real fighting spirit. And I think it's important that people remember that. And if people remember that their ancestors kind of had that fighting spirit, maybe they would get up as well and kind of make sure not to take back as well. And the point you make there, perhaps that's why they have. Uh, airbrushed the people who massacred because it could be a rallying cry for people to fight back against the oppression we live under now. It, it well could be. I mean, there's a lot of people who are unhappy, even today handing out flyers. It's been amazing the amount of people who are actually aware of all the atrocities that are going on in the in the world in general, not just in the UK. So many people are aware of these things, but people are just afraid to kind of speak out because they're not aware that there are other people who are also aware of these things as well. So if there was like a monument or something just to kind of acknowledge that actually Manchester has a history of this, it has a history of revolutionaries, it has a history of people who aren't, haven't been afraid to kind of stand up and speak and get together on these types of issues. Perhaps people would feel more inclined to come together. And actually at this point in history, that's what we need more of. We need people to come together and to kind of speak out against injustice and to kind of stand up for the rights that our ancestors have fought for. Let's make sure it wasn't for nothing. Okay, right, so today, what do you think we are trying to achieve with these players? We can only try, can't we? Um, Nearly two, well, nearly 200 years ago, wasn't it? 1819. Uh, yeah. 16th of August. 18 men, women, and children died on this very spot. Forgotten about. Airbrushed out of history. Schools don't teach it, and if they do, it's only briefly mentioned. Manchester City Council ignored it for 180 years before they. You still got just the one plaque now. Well, they they put a plaque, a blue plaque originally. Didn't even mention the people that died on this spot. Mm -hmm. Took people agitating for a long time to get by a red plaque which does mention the uh, murder of the people at Keterloo but well, even that is so out of the way and so high up that you'd miss it if you didn't know it was there so there's no um, there's no recognition of the people that died that day um, anyone watching this I would say that there is a commemoration from an Illuminati point of view for those who died in that blood ritual that day and that is the obelisks and the cenotaph 
which had been built on exactly the spot that those people were massacred. If you follow the symbolism, the occult symbolism of the Illuminati, you'll realise that those are death symbols. They put there deliberately as their commemoration of it because they are saying, we did it, what are you going to do about it? That's their attitude. So what, what do you think? Um, we've had you know, quite a lot of leaflets out today. Um, the response is about, I think, about 75% people actually taking the leaflets. What do you think is the total cause of apathy being able to do it? Oh, it's frightening. Yeah. The apathy is frightening. The people are just not aware of it and they're just not awake to it. And all we can do is our best and, and, and try and you know, plant that seed, get the spark going in people's minds, hoping that they will look into it a bit more or, or join with like-minded people like from We Are Change or Freedom Northwest, or they'll listen to Critical Mass Radio and um, listen to people that are trying to get the word out for them, telling them that they're slaves when they think they're free, telling them that bombing sovereign nations and regime change isn't freedom, it's about creating a new world order, allowing the banking system to run roughshod all over you, and then allow the, the government to borrow off the Bank of England to bail out private banks at interest, enslaving them, their children, their grandchildren. That's not freedom, that's slavery. And that's why we're here today at the, at the site where 18 men, women and children slaughtered, including a two-year-old little girl. But 60,000 people gathered here that day. 60,000. Wasn't, there wasn't an internet, there was no Facebook, there was no mobile phones. Just word of mouth and a common bond that they were enslaved and a realisation that things had to change. And we've got to be we've got to be the people that take on that mantle of the people that died at Peterloo. We are the descendants of the people that died at Peterloo. We've got to show their spirit. And that's what being in We Are Changed, Freedom North West, Getting things going like Critical Mass Radio, that's what it's about. It's fighting back and everyone should fight back because that's what we're here for, people. We're not here to listen to our iPods, we're not here to go home and watch Dancing with on Ice or Dancing with the Stars or Jersey Shore or the rest of their shite. We're here to fight back. It's the only reason.